Hello, everybody. I'm MJ, and I want to thank you for joining me here today at Reach to Touch, brought to you in part by ChuckHancock.com, MaryJaneHolt.com, and the Jesse Lee Jones Story.com. Well, guys, you ought to know by now that sometimes I just get excited. <laughs> I do. Um, I just got through editing the telephone interview, the exchange that I had earlier this week with Larry Ferguson in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, I do believe, and I didn't ask him about this, but I do believe that he is sometimes referred to as Mr. Nashville. Yeah, I think so. But I have wanted to have this conversation with Larry for quite some time. Of course, he's always thought it had to do totally with Dottie Rambo, my interest in him, that is. He was her manager. He was with her when she was killed in a horrific bus crash in 2008. But as interesting as that is, and as pivotal a role as he played in her life those last years, what interested me most about Larry Ferguson is his reputation for being such an amazing single dad. And we touch on that in this exchange. But in the course of our conversation, he said something that I actually did not catch until I was editing the program and listening to what he was saying. And suddenly I heard these words. He said... My gift was loving her music. Just listen. What, what I take away is his gift, the gift God gave him, was the gift of being able to love and promote the music of others. In his case, it was Dottie. But I don't think he was referring just to loving her music. I think he was saying, God gave me the gift to be able to love and promote others. Okay, about to jump into the interview now, but before I do, I probably need to tell you in light of what I just said about him being such a promoter of others, you need to tune in April 30th to TBN for the Harmony Honors at 9 p.m. Central Time. If you are a Dottie Rambo fan, you don't want to miss it. And now, here's Larry and me. Well, hello, Larry. It's MJ here at Reach to Touch, and I have looked forward for so long to having a conversation with you. How are you? Well, I am doing wonderful, and I am so glad that you were looking forward to having a conversation with me, because I was with you as well, so uh, God just kind of put us together here to to do a little (laughs) chit-chat. Well, now our listeners know I'm MJ, and they know you are Larry, since I just greeted you as such, but I don't think they know yet that you are the Larry Ferguson who (laughs) accompanied the one and only queen of Southern gospel music for so many years, Dottie Rambo. Yes, yes, yes. I call her the queen, too. That was my little nickname for her. And it was, I'll tell you what, you know, we go through things and, you know, you, you, you think, well, in such and such time, you'll get over this, or in such and such time, this will change. In such and such time, you really just have to go day by day because every human being deals with things differently. And I'll tell you, there's so many times I go to just kind of wrap my arm around that invisible elbow that's not there, you know, and mm. not even uh, realize she's gone. Because, and uh, she died in so May, I think, of, uh, well, five years ago. Well, yeah, 2008. And whenever. No, it was more than five years. I was thinking it was 2010, yeah. but it was 08. Yeah, and, it, it, you know, my one of the, the um, I guess, drawbacks of that whole crash and, and, and the healing process was um, I, I remember everything great before the wreck. You know, wow. Before that time. But after that, um, sometimes, like, the concepts of time uh, is very different in my head. Like something that was three years ago, 
may seem like a year or, 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 you know, something a year ago may seem just like two months. Larry, how did you get hurt in the bus wreck? Well, um, the um, when I woke up, because it knocked me out, I had a um, big couch over my legs, and uh, I went to move them, you know, to move them, and they're too heavy. So I thought, oh, man, I've hurt one of my um, legs, you know, but I, and I didn't realize it was as bad as what it was. Mm. And... Um, but I had broke uh, the left leg, which that wasn't, you know, that big a deal. But the right leg, uh, I totally lost my femur. It, it um, was disintegrated almost, I guess. Wow. You know, it was just so uh, mashed and everything crushed that there was nothing left. It was just crumbs. And um, that just hurt. Yeah. Well, that, that was just, it was just horrible. And it, it never did uh, heal right. And. They took, uh, later on, they had a surgery to take um, part of my hip and put there and, in hopes that, that the bone would um, graft and, you know, I, I'm going to have to have just that, uh, you know, rod or whatever is mm. holding everything together. But anyhow, that didn't work either. So on my right side, I'm three inches shorter. So that contributes to my pain a lot because I oh, you know, sat around and broke my jaw in four places. Um uh, I can't remember every every tiny thing that was wrong with me, but I now blew my, you know, uh, lung clots and all that. It was just a really touch and go there for a little bit, you know, between loss of blood and, you know, just... Well, now, Larry, the yeah. miracle of this, if if I'm not mistaken, is you are now raising your boys alone. Is that correct? Yes. 100% that is uh, a miracle of God. I tell you, the, the, the Lord works really in mysterious ways. I would have never thought in a million years that um, you would have asked me where I would be now if I would be raising my children by myself, that I would be divorced, that um, those things would have never been something that I would have uh, dreamed of. My children are my number one priority. I would never put them in any danger or, you know, shape or, or uh, you know, any, any harm's way. Well, you know, and I follow you on Facebook, and I get feedback about you from so many people, and that's what I hear, that you are the most amazing daddy. Tell me about those boys. My kids are the greatest boys. I mean, I know everybody says that about their own kids, and, and they should, uh, even though mine are better. But... <laughs> Uh, no, Kristen is, uh, Kristen, I cannot believe that in February, this coming February, my son Christian will be 16 years old. Oh, my. So, yeah, so that officially makes me really an old man. But my uh, youngest son, Pierce, he is 10 years old. And um, so, uh, that, you know, he, he'll be 11 in February. I just can't believe it. They, you know, and, and Christian, he's, uh, they're, they're polar opposites of each other. Um, Christian loves, you know, to act and perform and anything to do with the art. Wonder uh, where he got that from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there, and there, but Pierce, and Pierce is great with the arts, but he could, he acts like he could care less and he'd rather do sport and, um, and, you know, rough house. And, and those type of things. Do they and, both still enjoy being front and center with all the things you do? I think they do. Well, now, Christian, yes, he enjoys being front and center of anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little lax. Uh, and, and Pierre's kind of touch and go, you know. Uh, I think he, he he likes the calmness, but he wants, he wants uh, he'd rather have my complete, devout attention, you know, than probably the whole room's attention, you know. Well, I'm sure that Christian remembers Dottie well. Does Pierce remember her? Yes, yeah, they they um, they both do really well. But Pierce, uh, Pierce, yeah, Pierce will still have an occasional um, little breakdown, you know, when when like like, like you know uh, the last night they did this uh, tribute to Dottie, and uh, he came with me, and during it all, he kind of lost it a little bit in tears, which is very oh. un like him but he's very sensitive but they were they were buddies uh he and dotty were extra close you know every night they they um had uh fudge popsicles together <laughs> and uh she spoiled him rotten you know everything she would tell you not to do with a child she she would do you know now she was their godmother correct 
Yes, she was. And then, and she said, you know, she started saying, well, they're my adopted grandchildren. And, and you know, and she called them both. But, yeah, but yes, she was his godmother, and, um, and she loved him dearly. She loved both my kids very much, very much. They used and, to take to the stage with her, didn't they? Yes, yes very. She had um, Christian on stage singing with her. Oh, my. Oh, gosh, she must have been three or, or you know, I know he was old enough that he was able to hold the mic stand and stand there, you know, proud as can be, you know, not a toddler like in diapers, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, he was, he was almost, you know, and, um, yeah, and then turned around and she ended up doing that with Pierce. Oh. And he loved it with her, you know. But when she died, he never did enjoy uh, mm. the singing that much. He would do it. He won a couple of little awards and contests, you know. And, um, like, that's duet, you know, him and his little brother. I mean, him and his big brother. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, he, uh, as they did uh, the night before Christmas, and I was so shocked when I was here with my little Pierce up there, remember, uh, remembering lines and doing it in a British accent. <laughs> and, uh, and he was just so good at it. And he, uh-huh. he said, I don't like doing this. It. It's not fun to me. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's just amazing. You know, God gives you gifts, and sometimes you just don't use them. Or they grow dormant inside you, you know. So I, I hope he finds a way to incorporate uh, something, you know, that, that gift that was... You know, I find that. it I find it very interesting that you can hope for this and wish for this and see this talent in your child and in your children. And yet, in following you on Facebook and hearing others talk about you and even now having you on the phone with me, it sounds to me like you embrace and accept the individuality of your two sons. I do. I totally do. I think that the worst thing a a parent can do is force something on your child that they don't want. Now, within reason, of course. Right. I'm not talking about the logic of, of, that we all understand. Yeah, they got to no. brush their teeth. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and, and, and treat people kind and those right. like things. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I embrace that because what happens is so much is the kids, they go through these phases and they go through different things and, if they're not allowed to experience somewhat of that, if they're not allowed to fail, if they're not allowed to kind of step in it a little bit, mm. then, then, you know, you're not going to always be there to bail them out of trouble. So they need to learn how to act, and, and they need to know that the success that they have is theirs sometimes, and it wasn't something that you engaged in for them. That was something my ex-wife never could understand. She always wanted, from the very beginning, she always wanted me to try to, have my oldest son, and by the way, he would have loved every minute of this if it had happened, Uh but she always wanted me to try to get him on, like, one of these Disney shows, Uh like the Hannah Montana at the time was big, and all these things, and I felt that that was not the thing to do, because, uh, number one, I had, I I was managing someone else, number two, and so, therefore, I can't manage both of you by, you know, child and Right. An artist, and um, who was more than an artist, but, you know, I'm just think looking at this logically now. It could mm-hmm. do both. And then, two, he's not old enough to make that type of decision. Wow. And, and you know, so you're forcing it on the child at that point, you know, I think. Mm. Since, uh, you know, they're going it, to, it, it becomes work very early on. And, and, you know, fame is not something, fame is fleeting. Wow. I've seen people, mm. you know, just go to, the most beautiful human beings in the world physically mm-hmm. uh, or the most beautiful human beings in the world mentally. Mm-hmm. And within three years, they're just destroyed. Um, well, Larry. Because, you know, they, they go through puberty or they go through nobody wants them anymore, you know. Since we're yeah, talking can't. youth and puberty and childhood in reference to yeah. your children, I've been told that you had this dream since very, very early childhood. Is that true? To work with artists, to work in entertainment? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, my, my very earliest dream was I wanted to be the artist. <laughs> oh, right. And I realized I couldn't sing, so I had to give that up. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I had this, this burning desire. When I'm, when I'm committed to something, I follow it through. If I think that you can go to the next level and reach you know, the masses, 
Mm. I want to do everything I can as your manager to get that, you there. That's a gift. It, it, it really, you know, uh, someone said to me, they were trying to hurt, mm. and they said, because they said um, I had done an inter- interview or something, and, and they thought this was arrogant. It wasn't. Mm. They said, what is your greatest accomplishment? Or something like that. And I said, and I've had some great things, and but they were talking about family or anything like that. Mm. They were talking about career box. And I said it was giving the Johnny, uh, these weren't the words I used, but they essentially were uh, the same thing. Giving Johnny her second, I mean, giving her the comeback, you know. She had been ill and, and everything and had this persona, and we reinvented her and, and brought her back to the limelight. Now, well, you came in, excuse me, just a minute. You came okay. into Dottie's life right after the back issue. Actually, wasn't she partially paralyzed in one leg and had just been kind of out of the picture for a while? Yeah, that never got much better. Uh, I mean, she um, she learned to walk. The actual surgery that did the paralyzation and stuff, that was, you know, before I came. But the after effects of that were still there and some other things. And, and she was so... Uh, weak and so tiny, you know, she was 80, at her lowest, she was 89 pounds. She had um, bed sores and just all these type of things. So and, you were uh, like manager, probably son, caregiver, all of it. All of it. My thing was, and if, the, if the artist, first of all, is not well, mm. then they cannot do their part. Wow. And I've seen this woman be just tore all the pieces, mm. you know, and, and just in pain like you wouldn't believe. Mm. And the minute that that adrenaline, the Holy Spirit, the anointing hits her, mm. she was alive and just strong and strong and strong as an ox. And, and that is the truthful thing. And so I said that this was um, one of my greatest accomplishments. And someone said, well, that's very arrogant. You're taking uh, credit for her gift. And, that, uh, and they didn't understand. No, 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 no. Her gift and her talent and her all the, her wonderful things, those were all her. Absolutely, but yes. putting her in the limelight, putting her in the forefront, making a way for that to happen, making a way to nurse her back to health, all those things. Gifts were your gift. At, oh, yes. Yes. God yes. gave those gifts to me to make her shine. And we do that. People don't realize that there's a lot of people behind the scenes, and their gift is to make the other person shine. Honey, you are that. speaking a heartful, and I hope people are listening. I hope they're listening well, because none of us go our way alone. We yes. would be nothing without yes. others who support and encourage and yes. lift us up, literally and in prayer. Yes. Who lifted yes. you up as a little boy? Who who encouraged your dream? Your mother, your father, who? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me that. I was an only child, mm. very lonely. But I had the greatest, I was the favorite, golly, I have cousins and things that can kill me if they hear this. <laughs> but they know it's true, though, because they always tease me. Oh. But I was the favorite on both sides Aww. of the grandchildren. So my grandmothers were very, I was very close to them. Oh. And my father's mother, especially, she was like a best friend. Oh. And she played all these great old records. My other grandmother did listen to, constantly listen to music. And, uh, but my grandmother would play these great old records, you know, and all these kids at school, you know, they weren't listening to anything like that, of course. But she, you know, she, she always told me, you can do anything you want. You know, she was always encouraging. And then, um, we, uh, you know, kind of moved away from grandmother when I was a little kid. That broke my heart a little bit. I still got to see her, but that my parents divorced. No, wh- so, before we move on, what kind of music did she play? What records? Oh, she played everything. Well, first of all, you're going to laugh. Her favorite singers ranged from, well, her very favorite was Elvis Presley. All right. And uh, her second, her, her, she didn't like a lot of females, but uh, Loretta Lynn, she loved Loretta Lynn. And she would play, like, um, Ernest Tubb, uh, Walk on the Floor Over You, Filipino Baby. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> driving <laughs> Nails in My Coffin. Oh, you're but getting better. <laughs> she went with, she, she'd play all these old songs. And then, then uh, what was the, um, 
Hank Williams, he had some of the funniest songs. I'm talking about Daddy Hank Williams. Right. Uh, Mind Your Own Business and, and uh, Jambalaya and all these old songs. And then it was the fact that they were on vinyl records. So we would listen oh. to She had old plays, you know. They used to do a lot of, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, plays acted out on, on, you know, comedy skits and things acted out on um on LPs, and I just loved that. I just I thought, what a world. That she bought me every, uh, you might remember these, <clears throat> that the, we they would um, be these books. You could buy them from Walt Disney or whatever, and you would play your record, and then when it was time to change the page, it would go ding, 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 and you'd change the page. It would be a little chime, and that's how I learned to, to read. Oh! The basic, uh, before I was ever in school, I was reading really well, and my grandmother read to me every night, too, so she was very encouraging to me. Matter of fact, she's the one that encouraged me to work with Dottie. I did not end up going full-time with Dottie until after my grandmother died, but Mm. um, early on, she knew that I gave up a chance, because Dottie asked me prior to me actually doing it, and I um, put it off, but she said to me, Larry, you need to, she said, don't do like me. She said, my life was working in a factory because you needed to do that to make ends meet for your family and mm-hmm. things like that. But, but she said, my life and my goal, what made me happy was raising a family. And she said, what you need to do is what you love in your work-related things. If you do that, you'll never work a day in your life. She said, don't sweat away in the, in the factory just for benefit." You started so, doing it in your teens, didn't you? Bringing artists in to the Louisville area? Yes, yeah. Boy, you know, you studied a little bit on me. I'm a spy. I'm a spy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I was so involved in my church. And you were asking me about the different people that, you know, encouraged me. My church was my family. Oh. Um, also, early on, I don't want to forget this sweet lady. My godmother, I was Catholic uh, originally. Uh-huh. Um, because that was my family's on my mom's side space. Although none of them never really lived it, <laughs> but they they all went through the ritual of it all, you know. <laughs> but my I had a Catholic grandmother, and I tell you what, if there was ever a woman, a human being on this earth that you know just loved Jesus Christ oh. and loved God, great woman was her. I never even heard her say one ugly thing about a human being ever, and she had a great impact on me. I wish I could be half person that she was, but in in a lot of ways, she reminds me of Dottie, but uh, sorry, I got off track and back to what you were saying about bringing people in. Yes, I, I did. I brought people in, uh, music groups and everything, and that's how I eventually got to Dottie. Wow. Yeah. We, we had, uh, um, the first time I had Dottie booked, um, we had over 500 more than what we were allowed to have for fire code. So we had to turn all them those people away. I don't really know how many people mm-hmm. over fire code were there, but I mean we had well, let's like not say. Uh, let's had not admit to choir. it. <laughs> we we lived, filled the choir loft. We had them in the out oh. the floor. We used every fold out chair that was in every sun. This is a big church too, by the way. And it used every fold out chair that was in the building. Uh, people. Uh, Use fold out chairs and filled up the lobby just to hear it over the overflow speakers. It was the biggest thing that it hit um, as far as even the contemporary Christian singers, everything. We'd never, the, the radio station, they said we'd never had a crowd like this, you know. And Dottie drew that, and we just hit it off from there, of course, because she saw my gift was, was loving her, you know, loving her music, and, and I took care of, of the getting a crowd there. Cause that's the thing. Promoters a lot of times expect that the artist is just going to pack the house. Mm. And that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Uh, no, you have to. you got to work. So you got to work that, you know. Yes. Uh, if Michael Jackson, I, of course he's dead now, but if Michael Jackson were performing in your town, naturally he'd fill a building, you know, or an arena, but not if, if people did not know he was there. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you can't just put an ad in, in the little magazine and, and just expect people to come. Uh, you know, you know, I am work that way. about to panic here because we only have like a minute or two to go. And I haven't even asked you what your favorite 
Dottie Rambo's song is. You know, it's one that's not as big as, as many, but it's a song called Oil and the Wine. And it's about the Great Commission, um, you know, the Good Samaritan, you know, just reaching down and helping that person because you never know that one, if one day that will not be the, you know, that person may be leaning over you, reaching down, pouring in the oil and the wine. Honey, I've and, never heard that. Oh, it is the most beautiful song, poetic song, and, and, and um, quickly because you got, you know, I don't want to take your time, but she wrote it. Her daughter uh, had been through a divorce. This mm. was years ago when this was not this was a big bell no, you know. Right. And all these uh, religious people, you know, I said religious now, <laughs> yes. bought a bunch of tickets to her daughter's show just to boo her and walk out on her first solo, you know, Aww. show since their divorce. And it, it upset her. It upset her mother, but, you know, with my kid, you know. Mm-hmm. And she wrote that song that was many, many years ago, but it's a beautiful song. You should look it up on YouTube, and it's very powerful. Oh, I will, absolutely. And to everybody that's listening, once more, you said Oil and the Wine by Dottie Rambo, and that's your favorite, and you are Larry Ferguson. And you were there, right there with her on that bus when we lost Dottie. Yes, yes. And by God's grace, you survived. You are raising those two wonderful boys. Yes. And this woman, me, I am delighted to have oh. finally had a conversation with you. I'm delighted to have a conversation with you, too. And I just love your spirit. And we we just connected so uh, greatly on the internet. Well, we've Can been talking on Facebook for years now. And yes, yeah. yeah I, like um, I say, we're like we're connected. <laughs> I missed you last week in Nashville, but I'll be back in a couple of months, and we're going to make it happen. I want a hug from Larry Ferguson someday soon. I want one from you, (laughs) and and, and I'm giving you one through the airways here, but can I tell you one thing? Yes, Um, you can. It's so exciting. I haven't talked as much about this to anybody, so your your listeners, well, they did announce it last night, which was um, neat, Um, but I have an album coming out. Of all Dottie songs oh performed by some of the greatest artists of all genres of music. It's not just gospel singers, but they're all singing, of course, gospel songs, Dottie's gospel songs. And they're they're singing their favorite Dottie Rambo songs. We're talking some of the greatest people from country music, bluegrass music, contemporary Christian, southern gospel. Wow. But mainly secular artists, I have to admit. And some of their... There was a couple artists that went on to be with the Lord, and their very last recording was a Dottie Rambo song that I got to produce. Where I'm so excited for that album. Where can That's our true. listeners learn about this? Do you have a website? Yes. Go to uh, ferguson-music.com. Okay. And then there's also a Dottie Rambo tribute.com and And the album's not out yet, but look for it. When it comes out, please support it because... It was a labor of love. It took about three years to uh, get the recordings. We had to fly all around the country, you know, oh, getting honey. some of these artists. And you know what? When we get it, when it comes out, maybe we could do another program and play some of the songs or you got some it. of them or something. Because, you know, I want to let her light shine forever. When she died, she left her ministry to me and her will. Oh. And I want to promote her forever. Well, darling, I'm proud of you. I know she is. I hope that our Heavenly Father will continue to sustain and guide you as you do it. Yes. And I hope that I get to have you here on Reach to Touch again oh, someday anytime soon. Anytime you want me, I'm there. All right, babe. Until next time. God bless you. Oh, yes. Those who reach across the miles or sometimes just across the room. When we reach to touch, we make a difference every time. See you next time here on this same station. But before I go, I just need to remind you that Reach to Touch is brought to you in part by the Jesse Lee Jones Story dot com, Mary Jane Holt dot com, and Chuck Hancock dot com. Thank you for joining us here today at Reach to Touch.